Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Mesquite Cumberland Presbyterian Church, the greatest, friendliest church in the whole Mesquite area, right? Right. <laughs> Let's all stand and begin worship together. Amen. Thank you so much for being here today. This is the day the Lord has made, and we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. And uh, that's already started, I think. We've already started rejoicing, so praise the Lord for that. We're glad you're here. We hope you uh, enjoy this time of worship together. We try to make it to where everyone can enjoy it. <clears throat> now, let me make a, a real sad announcement. And that is, we only have two weeks left of casual summer Sundays. So, <laughs> after that, we're, we're back to the long dresses and the coat and ties. And No, 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 no. Just, just kidding. <laughs> we're not, we're not going to change our dress code just, just because it turns September. But uh, anyway, uh, it's fun, though, in, in the summer to come and be able to come as you are and, and enjoy, uh, enjoy the worship time without having to worry about what, you, what you're wearing. But we're so glad that you're here today. Uh, announcements. We have... Uh, Choir practice next week, 10 o'clock. <laughs> Choir practice has resumed at 10 o'clock on Sundays. So next week, uh, it'll be the uh, same time, 10 o'clock, for choir practice. Uh, also, uh, is that all? Soprano, altos, tenors, and basses. That's, or basses, no, basses, okay, that's. <laughs> okay. And uh, they're going to be starting real soon practicing for a Christmas cantata 
And uh, we've already got uh, copies of it made for the choir, and they're going to be starting real soon practicing. So if you'd like to get in on that, then be here next Sunday at 10 o'clock and uh, see what's going on. We're going to have a great... The Christmas Cantata this year, I think we're going to do it on a Sunday morning. I think we're going to do it on Sunday morning uh, this year. A little different. We usually do it on uh, a Christmas Eve or something like that. We're going to try to do it on Sunday morning for the Sunday morning service. So it, we're looking forward to that. But anyway, uh, I don't have any other announcements. Do you? Okay. Let's prepare ourselves for worship. Let's take a few moments and prepare for, to worship God. Merciful God, we come before you with praise and thanksgiving. Through Jesus Christ, you have lavished on us every spiritual blessing we could possibly imagine. Before the world was created, you already knew us and loved us. And you adopted us as your own children and redeemed us through the blood of Christ. Even more, you have made us your heirs and given us your own spirit as a sign and a guarantee. How we praise you, God. Thank you so much for all you've done. Open our hearts and minds to your presence among us here today. And may our worship this morning bring you honor and glory. For you and you alone are worthy of our praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, let's all stand and worship together. Out in the highways and byways of life, many are weary and sad. Carry the sunshine where darkness is bright, making the sorrowing glad. Make me Amen. You know that's a prayer, don't you? 
And so I'm going to ask you to think about this for a minute. Who are you going to be a blessing to today? You just sang, make me a blessing to someone today. And you prayed that. That was a prayer. You prayed it. So who are you going to bless today? You need to find somebody that can be the recipient of your prayer. And you prayed that prayer. I heard you. Well, you all, you all, you just sang it joyfully. And we, you know, we, we need to stop taking our hymns and songs, just doing them. We need to start taking them seriously. I got something else to say about that in just a moment in the sermon. But you, you find somebody that you can be a blessing to desire. Yeah, there may be somebody standing right beside you right now. But you think of somebody you can be a blessing to today. Let's sing that last verse one more time, okay? Let's affirm our faith together. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. Neither shadows that cast by the earth. God is love, and everyone that loves is begotten of God and knows God. So then, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh, but we receive the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Being therefore always of good courage, we walk by faith and not by sight, and we make it our aim to be well-pleasing to him. For we know that to them that love God, he works all things together for good. Amen. Be seated, please. You know what? That's the truth. To them that love God, He works all things together for good. Mm. Man. <laughs> and there are some things that happen in your life and my life that you just say, I can't believe this is going to turn out good. <laughs> This is going to be a mess. And then all of a sudden, it's not a mess. All of a sudden, it turns out just great. And you know what we do? We forget all about that scripture that says, He works all things together for good. We say, Oh gosh, Ooh, I'm glad I got that worked out. And we forget to give Him thanks. We forget to say, Thank you, God. Thank you for working this thing out for me and for my family. It's, it's a, uh, a common ailment <laughs> that it runs rampant in the body of Christ is so many times we fail to give credit to Him. We fail to give credit where the credit is really due. So let's go to the Lord in prayer at this time. Lord God, we give you thanks for all your gifts to us, for daily food, for health, <clears throat> for each breath we take, for freedom to choose, and for the gifts of your word, your power, and your love. Our hearts are truly overwhelmed, O oh God, when we consider how you have entrusted so much to us. Help us to be worthy of that trust. May we be a people who are unafraid to live as fully and as richly as you want us to live. Help us, O oh God, 
as followers of Jesus to multiply all that you have given us. Help us to be faith-filled and desire to increase your glory and your goodness in this world. Make us people who share in both word and deed that which you have given to us. Lord, we pray for the church gathered today, both here and around the world, that it may encourage all of its members to discover, develop, and use all their gifts, those of nature and those of grace. We pray for those this morning who are poor in body or in spirit, for those oppressed and heavy laden, for those sick or in despair, and especially those on our prayer concerns list and their caregivers and those that were called out today. Lord, minister by your Spirit and by us to all those for whom we have prayed and help us walk faithfully in the path of our Lord Jesus Christ who taught us to pray, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. For ushers to come forward at this time, we'll receive our morning offering.
Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Amen. Wow. Um, I'm going to be preaching on giving. And uh, that probably turns people off. Or sometimes it does. But let me explain this. This church uh, has a tremendous record of their giving and their benevolence. Uh, so this is not an indictment of our church membership and of our church for failing to give. The reason I'm doing this is because we're, we're entering a period of time <laughs> when we're faced with some... Uh, momentous financial decisions I don't know if uh, I don't know if you've heard about this or not but Church Mutual Insurance Company is one of the largest insurance companies in our country and what is their name Church Mutual and but they've decided that in several different states they're dropping all the churches because they've had such a bad run and Texas is one of those states tornadoes hurricanes uh, all this stuff going on and they've lost a lot of money and you know the insurance companies they're not there to be our friends they're there to make money and so we're losing our insurance coverage I think it's at the end of uh, starting September 1st so we're going to have to find other insurance coverage. And from what we hear, some of the insurance companies are really taking advantage of this. And we've heard people, I know, for instance, Pathway Church, one of our churches down in Burleson, uh, their insurance premium for a year has gone from $30,000 a year to $60,000 a year. And that's, that's not unusual. It's happening all over the country where Church Mutual has pulled out. And churches are left just scrambling around trying to find insurance coverage. Now, Tom has been working on this. I've made several phone calls to Memphis, to our headquarters. Uh, and so far, we haven't, we haven't found a great solution yet, but we're working on it. Now, we just want you to pray about it. And the reason I'm talking about, going to be talking about giving this week and next week is because I think it just, every once in a while, we need to kind of have a little push and feel that the reason we're giving to the church uh, is because God has called us to. So, in other words, now, with that as a preface, let me ask you to turn to John 3, 16 and 17. This message is entitled, The Giving Christian. And this is part one. And next week we'll do part two. But there was just so much material there that I decided to split it up because I didn't want to serve you lunch today. And uh, I wanted you to have, get out in time to go eat lunch. But uh, we're going to look at this in two weeks. John 3, verses 16 and 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Key word there. God so loved the world that he gave. He gave his one and only son. How many of you know have heard of Peter Marshall? Peter Marshall was a great preacher. And his life was immortalized in the book and the movie, A Man Called Peter. And he had an uncanny ability to capture people's attention and cause them to think. On one occasion when he was pastor of Atlanta's Westminster Presbyterian Church, 
Dr. Marshall <laughs> interrupted the worship service as the congregation was singing the old hymn, Take My Life and Let It Be. And in the Gaelic brogue of his native Scotland, he drew everyone's attention to the lyrics they were about to sing. Take my silver and my gold, not a mite would I withhold. And he explained to his congregation the practical significance of that phrase, not a mite would I withhold. And it was a reference to the widow's mite in the biblical story. And ask all, he asked all who could not sing that line with absolute sincerity to not sing it at all. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. <laughs> the instruments once again began to play. But the hundreds of voices that had been singing so energetically were completely silent. And as the notes died down, Peter Marshall made his final point to the church. It's okay for us to stop and think. And it's okay for this to make us stop and think. But giving really matters. And we have to take it seriously. He was right, of course. Giving is a serious matter. But it's also a practice that brings inexpressible joy when it's done in the right spirit. And as Paul told the Corinthians, God loves a cheerful giver. Giving is right at the heart of the Christian life. Giving is right at the heart of the gospel and at the heart of God. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. You see, God is the infinite and perfect giver. It is integral to who he is. And because giving is inherent in his character, when we give, we identify with him and we reflect his likeness. Everything of true value was given by God. He's given us life itself. Physical life in the blood that courses through our human bodies and spiritual life in the blood of His Son, Jesus Christ, whose sacrifice makes possible our salvation. God has set the pattern for giving and there is no worthier goal than to give like God gives. Now, is that possible? It's not only possible, it's imperative. I've been looking and exploring this concept of giving to find out what it means to be a giving Christian before I embarked on these messages. And I must say it's been a very enlightening journey so far. I've discovered a treasure of life transforming truths and what I'd like to do I want to share some of those with you today and actually just two and then next week we'll share three more and try to wrap this thing up first of all the giving Christian gives faithfully faithfully that's the key the giving Christian gives faithfully 1 Corinthians 4.2 says, It is required that those who have been given a trust must prove faithful. Faithfulness is the first and most important attribute of a steward of God. The Bible says emphatically that it's required, that it has to be faithful. And the trust encompasses all the riches and resources given to us by God. God's plan is that we manage those assets in a way that is spiritually wise and profitable. Now, there's a twofold significance to giving faithfully. First, it means giving by faith in God, mindful that He is Lord of all. 
In other words, when you go to give, you don't worry about, you're not supposed to worry about the bills you have to pay, uh, gro- buying your groceries, your clothes, whatever. You're not supposed to worry about that. You're just supposed to have faith in God and be mindful that He is Lord of all. How many of us give trusting God that He's going to supply all of our needs? That's a hard thing to do. It's not easy. But we have to have faith. So first it means giving by faith in God. And second it means giving in a faithful dependable manner. And in both meanings, God provides the power and we follow through with the practice. He gives us the gift of faith. We in turn exercise that faith by giving for His glory and His purposes. And I must say, Giving faithfully is not just about money. And I will admit, and I know you know this, money is a major determinant of life. For as Jesus said, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Matthew six nineteen. <laughs> I've counseled many people whose struggles and crises can be traced directly to their treasure, quote, treasure, and consequently their heart being in the wrong place. Faithfulness in giving to the right purposes in the right way has a powerfully positive effect and keeps our priorities in order. Now, secondly, let me say this. The giving Christian gives compassionately. Our English word compassion is derived from two Latin words that literally mean to suffer with. To have compassion is to suffer with other people, to put yourself in their shoes, to feel what they feel, to endure what they endure. And this is what Jesus did constantly. So great was his love and concern that he was often moved to compassion. I don't know how many times in Scripture you read those words, that he was moved to compassion. Throughout his earthly ministry, he gave help and healing to the poor, the diseased, and the needy. God is pleased when we do what Jesus did, giving compassionately to those who are less fortunate. James chapter 1 verse 27 says, Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress. You see, giving to those who can give nothing back is a spiritually beautiful thing. And it honors God. It honors God. When we give to those who can't give anything back, God is blessed and honored. I'm going to cut this kind of short (laughs) because uh, it is quite a message. But in Acts chapter 10, in the account of the Roman centurion, Cornelius, the Bible says that he gave generously to those in need and prayed to God regularly. In a vision from God, an angel came to Cornelius and told him, your prayers and gifts to the poor have come up as a memorial offering to God. Acts 10, 4. When a Christian gives compassionately to and for others, this scripture seems to say that it's the same thing as giving directly 
to God. So when you give to someone and you know that they can't give back, it's the same thing as giving directly to God. And you're just doing what He wants you to do. He has called you to do. Now I'm going to stop there. We have more to do. Next week we've got three more great truths that I want to share with you. I hope you can be with us. But uh, please, I'm just going to ask you, please don't take this in the wrong way. Like I said before the message, I feel like this church has done a marvelous job in meeting the needs of that have been presented to us, meeting the needs of the community. We've done our part in the denomination, in the presbytery, and I think God has blessed us, and he's going to continue to bless us as we continue to give to his work. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you so much for the privilege that we have to give to those who have needs, to those who are less fortunate. Father, we thank you for allowing us to give to your church so that your church can continue to prosper and grow and minister to those in need and do what we need to do in this community. Lord, we ask, we ask that you would give us your blessing as we strive to do what is right for you. Thank you so much for all you've done for us. And help us now to keep our eyes on you and keep our faith strong. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's all stand for our closing hymn.
I just pray that we all be able to say that. You know, say that in, in truth and in peace. Look up to God one day and say, when we see the Trump descend, him descending, and we say, Lord, thank you for coming to get me. It's well with my soul. Praise God. Let's bow for our benediction. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion and fellowship of his Holy Spirit be with each of us both now and forever. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen.